I would like to welcome back to the show Jen and Brandy with Lush Leaves. Welcome back to River City Live. We'll be talking about plants and how to take care of them now that the temperatures are getting colder. But before we dive into that, I always like to ask this question. How did you guys get into this industry? I started working in the Lowe's Garden Center at 19 years old in Pennsylvania, and the rest is history. I never left it. I married her. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the perfect story. It all makes sense now. All right, so the temperatures are getting colder, and even though it's Florida, it could still get down to the 30s. Yes. So what are some things that we should be doing for our outdoor plants, but then also some of our indoor plants as well, because it's getting colder inside the houses. It is, and while, like we said last time we were here, there's a huge boom on indoor plants, so there is a little bit of care for those as well. Outside, it's simple. Florida, even though we feel like it's freezing, it's very rare that we have a true freeze. We might have frost a couple mornings, and there's a few simple steps you can do. So for landscape stuff, if you are able to deal with a few ugly leaves, we do recommend leaving them be. If we're going into a freeze, which would be three plus hours of consecutive under 32 degree temperatures, okay, actual cold weather, then you can do things as simple as covering with a sheet. Um, some people will use plastic. We don't recommend that. It actually can cause more damage. Something as simple as using a string of old fashioned regular miniature Christmas lights can maintain a little bit of a heat bubble around your plants. It can raise it as much as four degrees. Wow. So running your lights across your plants, your outdoor plants, if you're truly concerned. Um, also watering. If you water wetting the foliage, we're not even talking about just watering the ground. Ground that has been recently watered stays warmer than dry. But your leaves, if you create a layer of water on top, that actually acts as a little bit of an insulator and it is surprising to most people. You think you're going to add to it. It works opposite. It prevents that damage. almost seems, yeah, counterintuitive in a way because you would think that it would be colder. But that's a really good. Yeah, note. it's a Is magic. Point, right at freezing. Yeah, it actually heats up a tiny bit at freezing, um, but that can be done even if you've forgotten. You wake up in the morning, and you're like, oh poo. Yeah. There's frost everywhere. If you can get to your plants before the sun actually hits them and just wet them down, it washes away and all that damage. Going back to another tip I thought was really interesting. If one of uh, the plant's leaves or branches starts to look brown, you're saying leave it alone. Don't cut it off. Let nature take its course. In some, in some plants, in a majority of plants, a little bit of a winter knockback actually produces better growth in the spring. So it's important to let nature do what it does best. In most of our plants, there are very few that are actually going to be killed straight down to the root. Um, a majority of our landscape plants are considered root hardy. So even though the top might look really ugly for a month or two, you're gonna see regrowth and you're gonna see that. And what about indoors? Because again, the temperature is changing inside the house and even humidity kind of yeah. escapes this time of year. Absolutely. What recommendations do you have? So indoors, truthfully inside, if you can baby your plants a little bit, and I'm talking just a little bit because we overlove really quickly and end <laughs> up doing more damage. Um, we, for our personal house plants, we'll take them outside. If we have a warm stretch, we'll take them outside for a day or two and then bring them back in. And we'll do that about once a month just to increase natural humidity. We can't replicate what nature does and do it properly. So a little bit of outside and then return them inside for long term. For greenhouses, which are super popular right now, you guys have seen it. There's a huge boom in houseplant industry and there's lots of people with little greenhouses at home. Something as simple as a fan on a very low setting to keep your air moving can help prevent frost damage or frost from settling. Cloudy skies, wind in the air, your weather people will tell you those things will help if you see clouds, don't freak out about a cold temperature. Your chances of frost, killing frost, are less likely. So just pay attention to your temperatures and don't panic. <laughs> a lot of really good tips. The other thing I wanted to ask too, uh, a community calendar. You guys have some events coming up too. We do. We do. All right, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we all have cheese. <laughs> uh, tomorrow evening from five to eight right over in the san marco area at sarah's bakery we have the lush leaf succulents and sangria class you can buy tickets to that from the it's link on combo, facebook huh? right <laughs> the winning combination um, coming up february 12th which is also a saturday we have the second saturday market which we do every second saturday of the month at the first christian first christian church of jacks over on san jose 
And February 12th in the evening time, we have Tattoos and Tropicals Take Three. It's our third time <laughs> we, break, we, have, we team up with Unique Inc. Um, over in the San Marco area. We get tattoos and plants and we have gourmet <laughs> hot dogs from To Be Frank and all kinds of good stuff. Um, a big one for us is the Community First Seawalk Music Festival over on Jack's Beach. That is an all weekend event, February 26th and 27th. And a huge one for Jen and I because we love San Marco. We are starting something we're going to try to do quarterly. It's called the San Marco Open Air Market, and it's going to be over at the Aspire Church on Hendricks right over here. We're going to have like 60 local vendors and food trucks and all kinds of good stuff. And if people want to learn more about Lush Leaves, where can they go? The website? Facebook, they Instagram. And a website, yes. Facebook, we answer questions at all hours, and I mean all hours sometimes. <laughs> yes. um, so any questions, if there's concerns about frost questions, cold questions, general plant questions, throw them at us. We love to be quizzed a little bit. Well, thank you so much <laughs> for your time and your information. We appreciate it. Stick around, more to come right after this.